Josh Windus, who got that winning goal in the dying moments of the game at Wembley. What a way to win it as well. He's joining us right now on The Breakfast Show. Josh, a very good morning. Morning, Josh. Mor- morning, how are you? Hi, yeah. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. I'm just laughing at him saying that's the worst game of football I've ever watched in my life. <laughs> <I didn't hear laughs> <laughs> what was it? What was it like to be involved in, Josh? Because from just us lot watching complete neutrals and watching on, we've had some real. I mean, you guys in general have had some real um, ups and downs this season, and to get there and to actually manage to do it, and it to be in the way that you managed to score that goal must have just been wild. Yeah, it was crazy. After ninety minutes, to be honest, I was thinking the same thing. Um, we just couldn't get going in the game. Um, I thought we were awful on the day, to be honest. Um, Barnsley were even better after they went down to 10. And um, yeah, and we couldn't just get going in our style of play or nothing really came off and it was pretty ugly to watch, to be honest. But yeah, to come up last minute and get a goal, obviously, is one of the best feelings ever. And I, I don't think you'll score a more important goal than that as long as you play football. But take us back to the semi-final when you kicked off at 4-0 down. What was you thinking then? The, the, day, the day after the first leg, I was thinking, it, this is done. Um there's no chance. And then, to be fair to the gaffer, he put a lot of belief in us, um, showed us games where we won 5 0 and scored in certain minutes of games and stuff like that, little things like that, and said we can easily beat these 5 0 if we score at these times. And I don't know how he did it, but we scored in literally, if you, if you saw the game plan, he's probably got it in his house somewhere, like on the cardboard piece of paper. We scored in the exact minutes he told us to. And, um, wow, amazing. Yeah, I don't, know how, I don't know how it happened. The Messiah. Darren. Yeah, basically. And that's, <laughs> Darren, that's genuinely true as well. What's he like? There's there's so much love for him in the world of football. Everybody we speak to talks about what a brilliant man he is. Tell me a little bit about what sort of a coach he is. Yeah, now, aside from tactics and stuff, everybody knows he's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Um, down to earth, can speak to him at any time. But as a coach, obviously, he's, he's, done, he's done brilliant at everywhere he's been. I think at West Brom, he was flying. At Doncaster, he was flying as well, and he came in. We've got 96 points. Um, so he's not really done too much wrong in his managerial career so far. So, yeah, hopefully he can uh, carry us going again next year and get as many points as we did this year. And Josh, I've obviously followed your career since knowing you and you know playing with your dad. Um, and, I mean, I've, I've watched you play at Rangers and you've come to Sheffield in League One. You've scored an important goal. Obviously, they're going to offer you a new contract. What what are you think in next season? What's your target goals wise? Um, what's well, my target this year was twenty, but I got injured, so I only ended up with sixteen. So I'm a bit gutted about that. But um, yeah, no, next year probably the same again if I can. I always try to get not unrealistic targets, but targets that are difficult to reach because otherwise there's no point in even in, in starting the season with an easy target. So yeah, I try to be the best I can be, and I put myself in. I tried to put myself in with the what the best players in the divisions would be getting. So. If I can do that, I can do that. If I don't, then I don't. Was it hard work? Well, I think it was about nine games in the end that, that you missed with injury. How difficult was that to to watch from the sidelines, especially because your absence clearly affects the team? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to say that, but um, it was obviously like difficult to to miss the most important part of the season. Um, obviously, we, we we wanted to win the league and we ended up in the playoffs. And um, yeah, make no mistake about it, we wanted to win the league. We didn't even want to be in the playoffs, but we had to get our head round it in the end and and obviously come back from a huge deficit in that second leg. And luckily yesterday we managed to win again from not playing too well. And and Josh, I mean, people don't realise, but there's two bus journeys home. Barnsley are on their bus and you're on your bus going back to Sheffield. Have you have you left London yet? No, no, not yet. <laughs> All right, so you've got a trip home now. That'd be a great journey on your way back to <laughs> Sheffield. Yeah, well, we've got an open-top bus, I think, tomorrow. Um but I think the gaffer and the staff went late last night on the on the bus home, and I think all the lads stayed out, and I don't know where they ended up. Some of them. Did you not? Or did you stay nah, out in nah, London? No, I, nah, I went back to the hotel. I was too tired. <laughs> Were you? I, I, it must be exhausting after being involved because it's a lot of football to be playing, and and also the like we said earlier on the way that the games have gone, um, these last couple of games, you must mentally just be completely drained now. It's there. Yeah, well, I think maybe that's why sometimes the performances in finals are not. Not as good as you'd expect because I think everyone is a bit drained from the build-up and maybe the nervous energy and stuff like that. But yeah, the, as I said, the game was the game was poor to watch probably. But um, luckily, I we had a bit of quality in the end that came through, and we knew that would uh, always come through against Barnsley because we do, they work really hard. But we feel like we have the better players, so if right. we match them in that way, then we we thought we could win. Josh, talk us through it then, right? Because I was watching it, and what are you thinking? The ball went out to the left-hand side corner of the box. 
what you're thinking at that moment. I'm watching you in the bottom of the screen. Could you smell a goal coming? Yeah, God's honest truth, Dean. I was thinking, I'm having one here, so I need to do something with five minutes left. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, when, when Greg's went out wide, um, a lot of people say this, but the gaffer's been saying all week when we get crosses, like um, to cut them back because their defence sit in. So I knew there's a chance Greg's is going to cut it back to, to some sort of the edge somewhere. So I just thought I'll just take a run there. And luckily it came to me. And I don't think I've scored many headers in my time, but I just lunged it in. Yeah, to see it. Did you place it? Did you place it or was it? did you just edit anyway? I just shut my eyes and it as loud as I could. <laughs> How many times have you watched it back? Uh, to be fair, only about two or three times. I've been trying to reply to messages. I've had a lot of messages, obviously, since since yesterday. So I've been just trying to get back to some of them. Is that the case where you, you have to put your phone on like airplane mode? You go into WhatsApp, you reply to a few, and then you come out of WhatsApp and leave it for a while because otherwise you're just constantly going to be on your phone. No, he can't turn his phone off, Laura. He just scored the winner at Wembley. He never knows, <laughs> he never knows offering you a deal. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's exactly what it is, Dino. That's exactly what it is. Oh, he's edging for a move. No, <laughs> is that not. what you're saying? No. Well, let, let's discuss next season because now that you're going to be in, we, we had Carlton Palmer on um, the show earlier on and he said, mark my words, back to back promotions I imagine for you it's just going to be let's focus on what we can do in the championship how how hard do you expect it, could, it to be up there yeah well make no mistake we've got to improve a lot from from this season um I think lately with our with the way our results have turned we've had to change our style a bit to go a bit more direct um if we want to compete next year we're gonna to have to probably go back to what we were doing at the start and try to play better football um but needs must and to get out of this division sometimes it's it's harder than you think so don't forget, we got relegated to this division with a points deduction as well, so we shouldn't have even been in it. Um, but it is what it is, and, and we've managed to get out of it. And next year, we really want to compete and not just go up there, just like Sunderland have done this year. So that's what we want to do. Josh, I've had your dad on, and he said, I know he's my son, but my goal was miles better than his. And uh, he's he's saying that uh, his volley was better than your header. I think I agree, to be honest. Do you? No, he hasn't. He hasn't. <laughs> hey, but what about your little brother? I mean, is he going to produce something? Because... There's a bet I, I for said, someone there. I said to you yesterday, you need to start scoring in the FA Trophy for like Grimsby or something <laughs> and get, get, us, get us a goal at Wembley. Uh, no pressure. Um, so, Josh, tell me what the next few days hold. So, is it an open top bus parade tomorrow? And then is there any plan? Everybody that gets promoted this season seems to be going to Vegas. Are you guys going to Vegas? No, I'm going to a beef for Tom Kearney's stag deal on Thursday. So oh, I'm wow. Looking forward to that. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Do you know fancy so, going to Ibiza? Have you got it in no, you? No, no. All I can see is an injury there. <laughs> Josh, don't slip in at the side of the pool or something. Just <laughs> just sit down in a chair if you're going to get drunk. I don't, I don't drink, so I'm all right. I'm fine. <laughs> you'll be, oh, no, that's even worse because you'll have the job of making sure everybody gets home. And in Ibiza, it's a night. Do me a favour, make sure. I'm sure you've already done it, but make sure you've already got a driver because you cannot get taxis in Ibiza. You'll wait hours. Who do you think you are, Laura? No, a driver. If we're a taxi, though, you know, like do, Josh, you know what I'm saying, don't you? Do you know I've heard some stories about you from my old man, though. So it's, it's, there we it's go. Some funny yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it there, Josh. Thanks for that. <laughs> Josh, you got, have you got have you got any that are, are, are PG enough to be shared on the radio? No, I'll leave, I'll leave it there. So yeah. it's really funny, though. Fair enough. Hey, you're on a high. Why spoil it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you want to be invited back on as well. Um, listen, amazing. Just a word for the fans as well that obviously have gone through a lot of turmoil with you. And after that 4 0, must have been going, well, I know what they were saying because I remember seeing the scenes. But just a word from you for your team and uh, to your fans, please. Yeah, it's inc- honestly, when you, when you join football clubs, you don't sometimes realise how big a club you are. When I went to Rangers, I couldn't believe how big the club was. And mm-hmm. same when I came here, there was 45,000 inside Wembley yesterday. And we, we knew they'd travel, but when you see scenes like that and every, every home game, even when you're playing, no disrespect, like the lower teams in League One and there's 25,000, 30,000 at Hillsborough, it's just uh, unbelievable how they keep turning turning uh, people out to the game. So, yeah, it's a massive club and hopefully the club can proje- uh, proje- uh, go on a bit better trajectory now and, get into the higher level where the the giant club should be. Yeah. All right, Josh, congratulations to you and your whole team. Well done. Yeah, well done. And um, and please please send our best to Darren as well. So massive congratulations to you guys. Enjoy Ibiza. Enjoy the Open Top Bus Parade tomorrow as well. We'll be be keeping an eye out for some sort of um, photographic evidence. Thanks, guys. (laughs) Enjoy. Take care. Speak to you really soon. Josh Windus there on TalkSport Breakfast. 
Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods. Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.